Hello mortals. Everything that you can see, your screen, your nose, the flu virus from your body that makes your nights a living hell as you slowly asphyxiate in your sleep due to a stuffy nose, they all originate from the cosmic furnaces known as stars. To be more precise, it's the atoms that constitute them that do. There are a hundred billion stars in our galaxy alone. That makes over one trillion trillion such cosmic furnaces in the entire observable universe. And that number is more than anything the primate human brain can comprehend. If you go out with a teaspoon and measure how many teaspoons of water there are in all the oceans on Earth, you just have to multiply that number by 10 to get close to the number of stars in the universe. This insane number of stars forms a galactic zoo containing a wide range of celestial bodies, starting with common sun-like stars and ending with extreme Planck stars. So let's rank them in an iceberg chart based on how exotic they are. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Let's begin with the Sun. Stars that are similar to it in size and mass are called solar-type stars. Also known as main-sequence stars, they fuse hydrogen into helium at their core to produce energy. Being over 333,000 times more massive than the Earth, the Sun is huge. But not as big as some of the biggest. On the other hand, stars as massive as the Sun are actually pretty rare in the universe. Such stars only sum up to only 7.6% of all the stars. Most of the stars that are scattered across the observable universe are main-sequence stars that are much much less massive than our Sun. Scientists have made up these classifications of stars based on their temperature and luminosity. Being scientists, they labeled them these random letters. O being the brightest and hottest stars and M being the dimmest and coolest ones. Our Sun and other solar-type stars fall under the G-class, generally also called as yellow dwarfs, they have an effective temperature between about 5,300 and 6,000 Kelvin. Such stars can fuse hydrogen for 10 billion years until they're out of any more hydrogen, upon which they rapidly expand and get cooler. The outer layers of the star begin to expand, and the star eventually grows and grows until it reaches enormous proportions. And then these sun-like yellow dwarfs become post-main sequence red giants, that is that they are fusing post-hydrogen elements to produce energy. These red giants can get up to five times the size of our sun. Due to their great size, red giants are many times more luminous than the sun, but their surface temperature is way lower than 5000 Kelvin. When the red giants start running out of helium, the star's gravity is not enough to stop it from imploding, and subsequently exploding. The ejected material remains as a planetary nebula. Eventually, as the core begins to cease any nuclear reactions, it becomes a dense, compact white dwarf. White dwarfs are only about the size of our Earth. They are like magical crystals supported by the wonders of quantum physics. Being really small, they mostly emit ultraviolet light, so we can't really see them in the night sky. Even though a white dwarf is very hot when it forms, it has no source of energy generation. So, they gradually cool down and radiate all their energy away. But this process is very very slow. So slow indeed that no white dwarf in the universe has entirely radiated away, in the past 13 billion years. Theoretically, when it does happen though, they turn into black dwarfs. The estimated time for the sun to cool enough to become a black dwarf is about 10 quadrillion years. And for obvious reasons scientists have not yet discovered any black dwarfs yet. White and then black dwarfs, this will be the life cycle end for over 97% of the other stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Above this point though, as the stars get hotter and more massive, things get a little more interesting. As we move up, we can see the B-type main sequence stars, which are 2 to 16 times the mass of the Sun and have surface temperatures between 10,000 and 30,000 Kelvin. The O-type stars are even crazier, at 15 to 90 times the mass of the Sun and surface temperatures between 30,000 and 50,000 Kelvin. Stars this massive are very rare in the universe. These massive stars might have more resources i.e. hydrogen to fuse, but they have to burn it so rigorously that their lifetimes are much shorter than those of their lower mass stars. As they spend their resources at an astounding rate, the B-type stars only make up 1-4% to of the entire universe. And the largest of them all, the O-type ones, make up only 0.00001% of all stars. 
As if being super rare and super massive isn't enough, the O-type stars even die in spectacularly fancy ways. Stars that are 10 to 25 times more massive than the Sun, explode into these flashy, colorful, and fancy supernovae, but they leave behind a neutron star instead of a white dwarf, which is the case for smaller stars. Neutron stars are crazily dense, that all the electrons in the atomic orbit of every single atom in the star fuse into neutrons. Their radius is in the order of 10 kilometers, while their mass is 10 to 25 times the mass of the entire Sun. They are the densest confirmed known objects discovered, after black holes. And they are hot. Over 600,000 Kelvin hot. These stars rotate extremely rapidly, up to hundreds of rotations in a single second. There are actually a couple different variations of neutron stars too. The first one is a magnetar, a neutron star that throws out a really strong magnetic field. A magnetic field that is a trillion times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. That's quite a lot! Next up is the pulsar, a neutron star that emits such high radiation only from its poles. Interestingly, there are also neutron stars that do both. Sometimes however, when a massive enough pulsar spins very very fast, even if it would normally collapse into a black hole, the centrifugal force might counteract the gravitational collapse and let the pulsar live for as long as it spins, as a final deadly dance. These doomed spinning stars are called blitzers. And now if the original star is even more massive, after exploding into a supernova, they leave behind a black hole. As you already know, Black holes are so dense that they literally bend and rip the fabric of space-time so much, that not even light can escape their gravity. These things eat everything and anything in their way. Once you cross their event horizon, you are gone. Not a single atom of you exists from the outside perspective anymore. This is known as the information paradox. It's also theorized that black holes radiate Hawking radiation back into the universe, which leads to their slow but inevitable demise, over numbers with a lot of zeros worth of years. Now we're getting into the deeply strange stuff here. Stars made up of exotic matter, instead of the normal boring stuff like electrons, neutrons, or protons, are called exotic stars. Quark stars, for example, form when the neutrons inside a neutron star decompose due to the gravitational pressure into their fundamental particles, up quarks and down quarks, thus, the star becomes even smaller and even denser than a neutron star. These hypothetical quark stars are believed to be able to maintain an inner gravitational balance and stay stable if no new mass is added. Other such exotic stars are boson stars, which are hypothetically composed of axions. These stars are so mysterious, that you literally can't even see them. Unlike all the other stars, boson stars don't emit radiation due to the axion properties, and as a result, are transparent. Because of their sheer size and huge amount of gravity, they literally bend all radiation surrounding them, making them invisible, yet detectable by their gravitational distortion. They are also considered to be plausible explanations for dark matter. Next, we have black hole stars, or quasi-stars, which are stars with black holes at their cores. These stars are hypothesized to have been formed at the very beginning of the universe, and would have been much bigger than any existing star nowadays. When these young stars, which are at least 1000 times more massive than the Sun, explode into a supernova, they would form a black hole at the center, while its outer layer would still remain intact because of how massive they are. The outburst of energy and the immense gravity of the black hole would form an equilibrium and give these stars a lifespan of 7 million years before they ultimately collapse into the black hole. Similar to the quasi-stars, there are the thorn Zitko objects. These are hybrid stars, made up of a giant or a supergiant star which has a neutron star at its core. This happens as a result of a collision between the giant and the neutron star, where the latter smashes into the former and replaces the core. These thorn Zitko objects quickly lose their energy however, and usually a pulsar with a giant accretion disk is left behind, like a black hole. In the end, this huge amount of mass eventually falls into the neutron star and it implodes into a black hole. Finally, let's talk about Planck stars. These are stars that are inside a black hole. 
Well, not really, but these are formed when the energy density of a dying star reaches Planck density, where the Planck density is humongous. Planck length is the smallest possible thing that we can measure, literally, a trillion times smaller than a single proton. Yeah, let that sink in. And when huge amounts of matter are just crammed into that small of a space, it forms a Planck star. And as you might expect, these are very very dense. So dense actually that we consider them as a viable alternative to black holes, which solves the infinite density glitch by avoiding an infinitely dense singularity. There are tons of mysterious objects in the universe, most of them probably ones that we've never even thought to exist. That's how the universe is. The Skynet army plans to conquer it all. But, now there are a trillion trillion stars, solar systems, and probably a lot more planets out there. And we are on one of those curious specks that got caught up in orbit trying to discover ourselves and our purpose. And that's beautiful. Expanding your knowledge and understanding of the world can be a beautiful thing as well, and Brilliant.org can help you do just that. Whether you're interested in exploring cosmic mysteries or just want to improve your STEM skills for college, work, or everyday life, Brilliant has you covered. It's the best platform for learning math and science interactively, with thousands of lessons that use practical exercises to give you a hands-on learning experience. With new content added every month, you can continually improve your science-oriented intuition by tackling challenges in a variety of subjects, from computer science and math to quantum mechanics and astronomy. And if you're particularly interested in the topic of this video, Brilliant's astrophysics course can help you learn more about cosmology and astroanalysis, deepening your understanding of other worlds beyond our planet and the mechanics behind celestial bodies. Follow the link brilliant.org slash science file, and the first 200 of you will even get a 20% discount on your annual premium subscription. Don't miss out on this opportunity to feed your curiosity and expand your knowledge.